Let us pray. Almighty God, who in your wisdom and goodness have appointed the offices of leaders and legislative assemblies for the welfare of society and the just government of the people, we beseech you to behold with your pardon favor as your servants whom you've been pleased to call to the performance of important trust in this republic. Let your blessings descend upon us here assembled and grant that we treat and consider all matters that shall come under deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and wealth of our country and of those whose interests you have committed to our charge. Amen. Good morning, honorable members. We can start the business of the day. Uh, Mr. Clark. Order number one, administration of oath. Proceed, please. Order number two, communication from the chair. Proceed. Order number three, messages. Proceed. Order number four, petitions. Proceed. Order number five, papers. Honorable members, under this order, we have one business by Honorable Kieti. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I'm Cosmas Kieti. I, I represent Lower Kawa and Kan Ward and the Chair uh, Committee on Trade economic planning, and uh, industrialization. Honorable Speaker, I wish to lay the following paper on the table of the House today, Wednesday, 4th August, 2021. The report of Committee on Trade, Economic Planning, and Industrialization on the Annual Progress Report, 2019-2020, financial year. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Kieti. The paper is signed. Table clerk, ensure that as we table, the, the paper is signed. Oh, you keep the set that is signed nearest to you. Thank you. Next order. Order number six, notice of motion. Honorable members, under this order, we have one business again by Honorable Kieti. Honorable Kieti. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, that aware that article 183, subject, uh, section 3, of the Constitution of Kenya 2011 provides that the current executive committee shall provide the current assembly with full and regular report on all matters relating to the count. Further, aware that Article 185, Subsection 3 of the Sub Article 3 of the Constitution provides that a count assembly while respecting the principle of the separation of powers, may exercise oversight over the count executive committee and any other count executive organs. Further aware that section 47 of the count, uh, count government act 2012 provides that one, the count executive committee shall design a performance management plan to, to evaluate performance of the county public service and the implementation of county policies. Two, the plan shall provide, among others, a objective, measurable and time-bound performance indicators. Two, 
leakage to mandates, C, annual performance reports, D, citizen participation in the evaluation of the performance of county government, and lastly, public sharing of performance progress reports. Honorable Speaker, noting that the current annual progress report was about by the Department of Economic Planning and I've sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, I wish to report. Uh, I wish to repeat, Honorable Speaker. Mm. Honorable Speaker, noting that the current annual progress report was about by the Department of Economic Planning after external resources mobilization with input from departmental monitoring and evaluation champions in collaboration with sub-county, ward, and village administrators who provided key data on status of projects. Honorable Speaker, acknowledging that the 2019-2020 uh, an, uh, annual progress report was subjected uh, to sectoral committees derogation, which involved presentation presentations by the respective chief officers and the reports presented to the Committee on Trend, Economic Planning and Industrialization. Honorable Speaker, I wish to give notice of motion that this Honorable House discusses and approves the report of Committee on Trend, Economic Planning and Industrialization on the Annual Progress Report 2019-2020 financial year. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Kieti. Mr. Clark. Order number seven, statements. Honorable members, under this order, we have one business by Honorable Angela Munyasia. Honorable Angela Munyasia. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, Angela Munyasia, special elect by Wiper Democratic Movement. Honorable Speaker, aware that the Assembly has enacted two pieces of legislation relating to natural resources, namely the Machakos County Sand Harvesting Act 2014, which has complemented by the Machakos County Finance Act 2021 contains trading business charges relating to the harvesting, to the sand harvesting, natural resources, extraction, operations, among others, and the disputed Machakos Management of Quarrying Activities Act of 2016. Concerned that the county executive has largely not implemented these county laws concerning natural resources and further concerned that the roads leading to the sand harvesting and quarrying sites are in deplorable conditions. That the resources are plowed back to the communities that bear the brunt of the unhealthy conditions caused by unsustainable extraction of sand and quarry materials. Aware of the poor revenue collection system in the county government that leads to massive revenue leakage and that not all who are required by the law to pay the revenue actually do so. Cognizant that Section 183 of the Mining Act 2016 stipulates that Royalties are to be distributed by the holder of the mineral right between the national county governments and the communities at the ratio of 70%, 20%, and 10% respectively. Aware that this, since, since the inspection of the county government mining royalties have not been shared among the counties due to lack of of the requisite legislation. Further aware that 
July 2020, by July 2020, it was reported that the National Treasury had more than six billion as mining royalties due to payment of counties and committees. Honorable Speaker, pass one to standing order 41, sub order 2C, I wish to seek a statement from the county depart departments responsible for environment, land, energy, and national resources, as well as finance on the following matters. Has the county government mapped out the natural resources recurring within the county? What measures has the county government put in place? Honorable, Honorable Angela, the yes. first one, mm -hmm. the first uh, question, the first question, has the county government mapped out the natural resources instead of occurring, use the terminology available? Okay. I stand corrected, Madam Speaker. Available within the county. I repeat, has the county government mapped the natural resources available within the county? What measures has the county government put in place to enhance revenue generation from natural resources in the county? What measures is the county government taking to safeguard the environment and residents against the damage and nuisance posed by the exploitation of natural resources? Has the county government put any measures in place to ensure compensation of the people who have been affected by the exploitation of the natural resources? What is the county government doing to ensure that royalties and distribution by the holder of the material, of the mineral, right between the national county government and committee and communities? As the, at the ratio of 70, 20, and 10 percent, respectively. Pass one to section 143 of the Mining Act 2016. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Angela. Honorable members, uh, this is a very critical statement that is very loaded. And I know you'd want to make some statements or observations on it or comments before it is referred to the relevant committee for the necessary processing. Do we have comments from any member on the floor? Honorable Helen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I congratulate uh, Moshmiwa Angela Munyasia for bringing such a, an important statement in the assembly. Uh, when I look at the figures, like six billion being held by the national government and not being able to be um, uh, di divided or distributed according to the formula of 70-2010 due to lack of a requisite legislation. I think it's the high time that an, as an assembly we sit down and see how we can come up with that legislation to ensure that, um, of course in collaboration with the executive, to ensure that these monies are, um, are sent back to us. Uh, secondly, I would also request that uh, we also come up with a um, uh, uh, regulation or now, or legislation now, um, members of our county who are affected by these acquiring activities are also um, are compensated. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable uh, Helen, Honorable Kalumu. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My name is uh, Honorable Kalumu. Uh, representing people of Kitiman Ward. Madam Speaker, I would like to start with the, the first question that has been directed to the responsible departments. And one of the questions is whether there is mapping of the resources available in the county. Madam Speaker, there is a, a law which is there in place for sand harvesting and which needed first of all before uh, harvesting of sand it needs it needed the county res the, res the responsible department of environment 
to map where the sand needs to be uh, harvested, but that is not done. That means we have not even explored as a county for so many resources, natural resources, like where we have forests, like where we have uh, gazetted um, resources which can help us raise revenue for this county. So I would like to say that uh, I am very much uh, cognizant that Honorable Angela brought this to help the county try to meet its resources gap because we need to have revenue resources to build our county. So one area, Madam Speaker, whereby we are missing with the point of collection of revenue is one, you cannot uh, exhaust something which you don't know where it is. And one of the ways which we can do is map it so that we can arrange a way or now we can start extracting it. Secondly, uh, the second question is what measures are, is put in place to enhance revenue generation from the national resources is, is that, Madam Speaker, I will go back to sand harvesting again. The law requires some of the monies to be given back to the society, but that is not done. All other uh, surrounding counties are getting sand from our county. But our people, the community, are losing the income, the revenue, which can help them uplift their living. So if there are some measures which can be put in, in place, Madam Speaker, to make sure that that revenue is not lost on the side of both the government and, uh, and the community we will have a better life in the, in the, in, in the villages and uh, in the society. So, Madam Speaker, I would request if there is any possible measures like linking the collection of revenue uh, to the internet in a way that the ICT can get machines whereby when you collect something is sent, when you collect money is sent direct to the uh, central collection point. That will help us not lose a lot of revenue. Other measures, Madam Speaker, which has, not has been taken care of is once an extraction has been made, the en environmental de degradation has not been uh, taken care of. You find that sand has been extracted, Madam Speaker, and then the, the holes are left unfilled. Even in the quarries, we will find that there's big mass of water, a big, very big holes, which are not uh, filled again with anything else which can make sure that our environment is not getting worse. Another thing is cutting trees, because trees are also resources, because we get rain from it and we also get timber and everything. Those measures, Madam Speaker, that can be put in place to make sure that uh, we are protecting our environment for the purposes of extracting it in the future, I think it will be very good for, uh, for us. So with those few remarks, I beg to stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Ka Kamulu. Kalumu, sorry, Kalumu. Honorable Minority Leader, as the last comment, remember this is just a statement. It's going to come by way of a report uh, which you will debate extensively. 
Correct. And possibly even later by way of a bill, which is a form of making a law. So there will be a lot of opportunity to debate. It's just to make comments. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. In fact, I was coming to that. I'm Alex Kamitu, MC Etala, Ward and uh, Lead of Minority in this Honorable House. Madam Speaker, as I said, mine is very short because, Madam Speaker, uh, through records that we have is that uh, the Machakos County Sand Harvesting Act of 2014 uh, really is giving us the policies, the regulations that should be followed. And again, also, the Quarry Act Activities Act of 2016. What I'm saying is that uh, this is a very good statement that uh, Honorable Angela has brought. Uh, my concern is that, uh, Madam Speaker, we are passing a lot of uh, uh, acts in this house, but uh, the follow-up, the follow-up is not being carried out. So, on this statement, which is a very important uh, statement, we are supposed, Madam Speaker, as a house, and in collaboration with the executive, we should ensure that any act that has been passed into this, uh, from the executive and by the assembly, we should follow, because all these regulations about uh, County Sanding Harvesting Act of 2014, the Mining Act, it is giving us ways and regulations that should be followed to curb all these matters that has been raised by Honorable Angela. Otherwise, if we follow, we will not be far from what this statement is seeking. Thank Honourable, you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Minority Leader, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but uh, the issue of the Assembly following, once the Assembly resolves, it has done its work, really. It is for the executive to implement. And because the assembly, the members will not have the way, the funds for implementation. So your jobs are so separate. And I keep on telling you to appreciate this. Otherwise, then you will go now start doing the work of the executive and then you know the issue of separation of powers. You will start interfering with the CEOs. And uh, so what you can do is if they have not been implemented, it's now to summon those who are supposed to implement so that they can tell you why there has been no implementation. But we should have a good will, really, each of us to do our work. Why should one be pushed to do your work, their work? Like you members being pushed to come to the assembly, and I've not lacked a quorum, I must say I am happy. I've not lacked a quorum for you to do the business for which you are here. So you are doing your work. So let the executive also do its work. Thank you. So what we'll do, members, uh, let the statement be processed by the following committees. First, the environment, land, energy, and natural resources. Okay? You look at um, each of that, that committee, environment, land, energy, and natural resources has a big role in the statement. But then we also have the aspect of financial collection and sharing with the community and so on. So that will also involve the Committee on Finance and Revenue Collection and mostly looking at uh, question number two. If you see the way the statement is framed, question number two is about uh, enhancing revenue generation from the natural resources. But one, three, four, and five have everything to do with the natural resources, the, min, the, the Department of Environment, Land, Energy, and Natural Resources. Now, the two committees, each should report on its respective part um, within one month. That is, not later, if it is a working day, not later than the date, Let me rescind that, honorable members. Allow me to rescind that. I noticed that uh, on the 25th, we'll be going on a short recess. You're aware of that? So we should have this report before we go on the short recess because there's another process that you want to um, put in, in place still on the statement. You can decide whether you're going to do a legislation on the mapping out and, the, of course, related uh, uh, benefit of the community from those resources and the benefit of the county government from the resources. And indeed, it may also touch um,
collaboration with the national government. I know under the Mining Act 2016, the national government collects most of the money from the quarries. But we want to know what is there for the county government so that it can be taken up also with the relevant uh, ministry at the national government level. So let's have the report on or before the 25th day of August. And that will be the last day before we go on the short recess. Thank you, honorable members. Mr. Clark, proceed. Order number eight, motion, approval of report on uh, investigation on the implementation status for ward priority projects under the Department of Public Health and Community Outreach for the financial year 2020-2021. Thank you, honorable members. Under this order, we have one business by honorable Katumo. And uh, I just want to notify the members at one point in the process of this business, I will step out because I am supposed to be chairing the CASIG. There are some urgent matters that needs to be processed. So I'll make the necessary arrangements for a continuation of the seat that I'm taking. Honorable Katumu. Where, where you find Honorable Katumu, you don't need to read for us on the report. You will refer to us the sections. All right, but I'm doing the together. motion first. Eh? Pardon? I'm doing the motion first. Oh, yeah, you're doing the motion first. I'm All just right. referring to the time when you come to read. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, motion. Honorable Speaker, that are aware that the Committee on War Development Fund is a select committee which draws its mandate from the Machakos County War Development Fund Act number 2 of 2014, whose ob object and purpose is to ensure that a specific portion of the county annual budget is devoted to the wards for purposes of development, wealth creation, and in particular, the fight against poverty at the world level. Aware that uh, section four, subsection one of the Art Act establishes that World Development Fund, which shall be administered by the officer administering the fund and the direction of the county World Development Fund Management Committee, further aware that uh, Article 183, subsection 3 of the Constitution of Kenya 2020, 2010, stipulates that the county executive committee member shall provide the county assembly with a full and regular report on all matters related to county, while Article 185, subsection 3, states that the county assembly, while re respecting the principle of separation of powers, may exercise oversight over the county executive committee and any other county executive organs. Uh, honorable speaker, I wish to move the motion that this honorable house discusses and approves the report on the implementation status of the world priority projects and the Department of Public Health and the Community Outreach for the year 2020-2021. Thank you, I would wish to request honorable Alex Kamitu Little minority to second the motion. Thank you, Honorable Katumo. Honorable Alex Kamitu. <coughs> Thank you, Honorable Minority Leader Alex Kamitu. Honorable Katumo, proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This is the World Development Fund Committee report on the implementation status for the World Priority Projects and the Department of Public Health and Community Outreach for the financial year 2020-2021. Uh, we have uh, one, one, that is previous. Uh, we can go to the mandate of the committee. Yeah, 1.2, we can. The preface is taken care of by the motion and also the top, the heading, the, cap, the title of your report. The mandate of the committee, 1.2, honorable speaker, the committee on World Development Fund is a select committee which draws its mandate from the Machagos County Development Fund Act Number Two of 2014, whose object and purpose is to ensure that a specific portion of the county annual budget is devoted to the wards for purposes of development, wealth creation, and in particular the fight against poverty at the world level. Uh, 1.3 is a committee membership, as listed there. Um, then two is background information. 
And I think this is important, I can read. Yes, yes, please do. Honorable Speaker, the World Development Fund is established under the Machakos County World Development Fund, Act Number 2 of 2014, which was ascended to on the 8th, 8th 18th day of November 2014, and commenced on 2nd December 2014, as stated in the committee mandate. The objects and purpose of the Act is to ensure that the specific portion of the county annual budget is devoted to the wards for purposes of development, wealth creation, and in particular, for the fight against poverty at the world level. Honorable Speaker, in the financial year 2020, 2021, this Honorable House approved a budget of Kenya shillings 91,820,163, and the Department of Public Health and the Community Outreach to undertake various world priority projects. Section 11, uh, subsection 2 of the Act states that all disbursement from the fund shall be for specific projects as submitted by the wards in accordance with the procedures outlined. Password to Article 183.3 of the Constitution of Kenya 2020, that stipulates that the county executive committee shall provide the county assembly, the county assembly, with a full and regular report on all matters related to the county. The World Development Fund Committee requested for information from the Department of Public Health and the Community Outreach on the World Priority Project earmarked to be undertaken by the Department on the in the financial year 2020. 2021. Uh, committee request uh, three, committee request for documents. Honorable Speaker, on 9th April 2021, the committee wrote a letter to the Chief Officer, Department of Health and Emergency Services and the Public Health and the Community Outreach, requesting to be provided with documentation related to the implementation status on all world priority projects earmarked to be undertaken by the Department in 2020. 2021 financial year. The chief officer made a presentation to the committee on world priority projects allocations, their status, and the year of completion in three phases as provided in the following matrix. Um, the next page, number page four, we have those phases given. We have phase one on ongoing world priority health projects. Those are community health hospitals in the financial year 2020. 2021, we have columns, we have uh, column for sub-county, where they, they are found, ward, then we have project name, community, uh, that is a community hospital name, budget estimate, and then we have completion status. Number one, we have Kathiani sub-county, where we have Upper Kaiwa in Kaveani. The project is Kaveani, that is a hospital. The budget was 10,810,700. The completion status is 70%. Then second, we have Yata, uh, Kidimani in Yata sub-county, the Kidimani Community Hospital. Uh, estimate budget was 10,135,085 shillings. Uh, the status is 95% complete. Then number three, we have uh, Shiokimao in Mavoko, in Mulolongo, that is Mulolongo Community Health Hospital, where we have it was allocated 10,067,695 uh, shillings, and it is at 95% completion. Then we have Lo Lower Kiowa in Kathiani, that is a Thayani uh, uh, project. Uh, estimate budget is 10,211,625 shillings. It is at 80% completion. Uh, status. Matungulu, we have Cheleni in Chele, we have the word Cheleni, we have Cheleni in Matungulu, where the estimated budget is 10,220,786, and the completion status is at 7%, 70%. Then in Mwala sub county, we have Mudetheni, and the Mudetheni Community Hospital, uh, estimated budget is 10,178,000. 888 shillings, uh, it is at 7% completion status. In Yata, we have Ndalani. In uh, and Dalani, in Yata, there is Kisiiki Community Hospital. Uh, budget estimate was 
1,830 shillings, and the completion status is 80%. In Mavoko, we have a river, in a river ward, we have Chumvi Community Hospital. Uh, estimate budget is 14 million 236,120 shillings, and the completion status is at 50%. In Kalama sub-county, in Kalama ward, we have the Kalama uh, Community Hospital. Uh, estimated budget was 10,662,574 shillings, and the completion status is at 90%. In Machako sub-county, in Mua ward, we have the Mua Community Hospital, at 8,527,260 shillings and is at 90% completion status. In Mwala sub-county, we have Kibauni. In Kibauni ward, we have Katulani uh, Community Hospital. The estimated budget was 8,875,362 shillings and the completion status is at 90%. In Masinga sub-county, we have Kefa. In Kithioko, is, in Kefa, we have Kithioko Community Hospital, and uh, the budget estimate is at ten million eight hundred and seventy-five three hundred and sixty-three shillings, three hundred and sixty-two shillings. I want to repeat: in Masinga, in Masinga sub-county, we have Kefa in Kithioko, uh, Kefa, Kithioko Community Hospital. And the estimated budget is 10,875,000 shillings and 362 shillings. It is at 80% completion status. Then we do also have another tabulation, another table, which shows the phase two of the proposed world priority projects. Uh, and those are the dispensaries that we are, of course, anticipated for renovation for the financial year 2020. 2021. And uh, we have the column for project name, the ward where it is found, sub county, then the budget estimate. Number one, we have Ikulu dispensary, dispensary at Mubuti uh, ward, that is Machago sub county. The budget is 856,968 shillings. Then, number two, we have Wondeni dispensary in Mavuti ward in Machako sub-county. The budget is 1,023,000 shillings, 392 shillings. Then uh, Chanzasu in Kalama ward, that is Kalama sub-county. The budget is made 1,182,000 shillings, 590, uh, let me repeat, in Kalama is 1,000,000. 182,597 shillings. Then in Chewang, in Mwala, in Mwala sub count, the budget estimate is 2,457,069 shillings. Then Kamudanga dispensary in Motituni ward, Machago sub county, the budget estimate is 1,023,000 shillings and 392 uh, shillings. Kakuku in Mananja Ward, uh, Masinga, one million. The budget estimate is one million three fifty-three thousand five fifty-three uh, shillings. Then number seven is the Mubuti dispensary in Mubuti Ward in Machako Sub County. The budget estimate is nine sixty-four thousand four uh, six five uh, six fifty-six shillings. Number eight, Kwa Mutalia. In Matungulu Ward, uh, Matungulu West Ward, in Matungulu Sub County, the budget estimate is 1,131,750 shillings. In Kitulani Dispensary Matungulu North, in Matungulu Sub County, the budget estimate is 2,950,000 shillings. In Mua Hills Dispensary Mua Ward, Machako Sub County, the budget estimate is 1,000,000. 773,746 shillings. Kwa Kalusia in Mudwani Ward, Mavoko Sub County, the budget estimate is 1,162,490 shillings. Kithia in Kadian Central Ward, 
in Kathiyan sub county is 1 million. That is budget estimate 1,918,430 shillings. In Mikuyun dispensary number 13 in Mua Ward, Machako sub county, the budget estimate is 856,968 uh, shillings. Number 14 is Kauthuluni, Kauthuluni dispensary in Kikesa, uh, Yata sub county, 489,370 shillings. In a Kalakala, we, are in a, we have a Kalakala toilet block. That is a project in a Kalakala ward, Masinga sub county. The budget estimate is 1,800,000. Uh, uh, we have another project, Mew HC toilet block in Mudhedeni ward, Mwala sub county, is at 800,000. Then we have Mumbun dispensary in Mumbun north ward, in Machago sub county. The budget estimate is 8 million. Then we have project number 18, Masi Level 4 Hospital in Masi Ward, Mwala Sub County at 110 million. Then we have Level 3 facility uh, as a project in Machakos Township at Machakos Sub County at 10 million. Then we can go to phase 3. Uh, of the stall community hospitals. There is phase three where we indeed and looked at the stalled community hospitals. We have the name of the project, the ward, and then sub county, and then estimated budget requirement. Number one, we have Ndidi, Ndidini project in Ndidini ward in Masinga sub county at 12 million. That is the budget estimate requirement. Then Kathi, Kathukini Edmudesia ward. Masinga sub county at 8 million. Kikesa in Ikombe, that is that sub county, at 12 million. We also have another project in Kusio Muomo, Machako Central Machako sub county at 9 million. We have Wamunyu uh, Community Hospital Project at Wamunyu Ward in Mwala sub county at 12 million. Then we have Mat Matungulu Community Hospital at Matungulu West Ward. Matungulu sub county at 17 million. Then we have Kitambasi, Matungulu North, Matungulu sub county at 17 million. Then we have Kawaon, this is in Kangundo North Ward, Kangundo sub county at 12 million. Then we have Ngiini New uh, Community Hospital at uh, Kangundo Central Ward, Kangundo sub county at 14 million. Um, number four, the committee. He invited the chief officer to respond to some questions that we were given. The committee invited the chief officer in a com committee meeting that was scheduled on 20th, 20th April 2021 via Skype and another physical meeting on 28th June 2021 to shed light on matters of concern which we are raised by members, by honorable members. Some of the responses given by the chief officer are as outlined below. During the interrogation, the chief officer indicated that they had experiences, successes in the department the financial year 2020-2021. So the COVID-19 pandemic had disrupted their normal performance, but still we are, they were able to complete community-based hospitals, which we are planned to be constructed in each ward in that particular year. He also added that those had begun, those that had begun were 37 in number and those had been completed. Those that had been completed were 20. Let me repeat that. He also added that those that had be been begun were 37, and those that had been completed are 20, with 17 still in various stages of development, although some of which uh, started some oh, some which started in 2014 and others in 2015. Honorable Speaker, in order to ensure that all contractors awarded contract in the year, the financial year 2020, 2021, and the previous financial years are paid upon presentation of their completion certificates. The chief officer elaborated that his, its, his department usually has a timely payment scheme in place where one certificates are presented. The same is entered into the EVMIS system and paid on time. But if they are not paid in the current financial year, they are factored into the supplementary budget or captured on the pending bills 
has given priority in the following financial year. Honorable Speaker, the Chief Officer pointed out that the Department had completed a total of 27 projects in the last two years with a number of dispensaries awaiting operationalization. Some of the cited dispensaries were the Kaseve and the Oleshek dispensaries uh, in uh, the River Township ward. Honorable Speaker, due to starvy shortages brought about by some of the dispensaries not being operational, the department has made plans for certain facilities to be used for outreaches once or twice a week by hosting a healthy activity such as a camp or an outreach to raise awareness that the facility will soon be ready for use. So far, they have conducted outreach at 10 facilities in the hopes of opening them in the near future once they have the necessary personnel, equipment, and resources. He said that, that there was a plan in effect and a recommendation has been made to the county public service board for a replacement of nurses and health employees who have left the service due to natural attrition, such as retirement, relocation, transfer, road death. Honorable Speaker, in these final remarks, in his final remarks, the chief officer indicated in terms of development, they have depleted their finances, resulting in 98% absorption of funds budgeted. He further stated that the remaining 2% shall be integrated in the forthcoming supplementary budget for the department to have 100% absorption. Number five is the committee visit. Committee did some visit to the selected ward priority projects. Honorable Speaker, in examining the status of ward priority projects by the Department of Health and Emergency Services and the Public Health and Community Outreach for the financial year 2020-2021, the committee's primary approach was to elicit background information as to how the budget, budgetary allocations meant for the construction of world projects were utilized versus their implementation status. The exercise involved visiting some board projects in the world for fiscal ver verifications of the project's completion status vis-a-vis -vis the status report submitted by the chief officer. Number six in general findings from number one is the committee found out that most, that most of the community hospital projects had stalled with numerous incomplete building going on, going as far back as five years, they, yet they are critical for the economic well-being of the account number two. The committee found out that the funds had been rolling over from one financial year to another since 2014 to date, resorted to stalled community hospital projects in wards due to issues such as land dispute, changes of con change of contractors and budget. Number three, the reason for slow project completion as provided in the letter forwarded to the committee by the chief officer included the following. Number one, delays in disbursement from national treasury as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. Secondly, slow construction by the contractors awarded due to their own internal challenges of finances uh, and even competencies as a result of strict adherence to project regulations. Three disputes arise therein after Howard. Uh, then number four is unavailability of land. General finding number four is committee found out that some contractors had no capacity to undertake the project assigned successfully within the stipulated period of forcing the department to terminate their contract and a retainer, again, ends the result in delay or stalling of projects. Um, number seven is committee observations, honorable speaker, based on the reports. Site visits and discussion with the chief officer. The committee observed the following. Number one, that the chief officer's report on projects undertaken, amount and stated, status appear to have a number of inconsistencies or rather differences in terms of monies expended, contract amount, project start date and expected completion date, as well as project description and the rate of completion. Number two, Honorable Speaker, that the data provided under phase two 
on proposed ward priority project lacked a column to show the status of renovated dispensaries and the amount spent, thus make it difficult for the committee to make a follow-up. But three, Honorable Speaker, that the data provided under phase three contained the stored community hospital project, but the committee was never given enough reasons as to why the said project have stored for such long a period of time. Number four, that there is need for a rationalization and fairness in distribution of funds as some projects have been allocated very high amounts of money as compared to others. An example given being the Masi level four hospital with a budget of 110 million Kenya shillings and the Mumbunin dispensary with a budget of 8 million shillings. Number five, that some of the completed projects, especially the dispensaries, were not oper operational, operational due to lack of staffing. Committee observations. Honorable Speaker, based on the committee findings and the observation made from the report forwarded to the committee by the Chief Officer, the committee recommends as follows. Number one, that given the importance of analyzing the ongoing community hospital project, resources allocated for the project should be monitored and evaluation framework be put in place to ensure that these projects are completed within the stipulated time frame as indicated in the status report submitted by the Chief Officer. This is to forestall cases of many stored projects witnessed by the committee within the health facilities. Number two, Honorable Speaker, that the committee recommends that the county executive committee member on health through the county secretary forwards to the assembly a report on all the stored ward projects in the financial year 2020-2021 providing a work plan on how the county executive intends to complete the stored project within 16 days on receipt of this report. This will help in the reduction of a wide element project in the county. Number three, Honorable Speaker, the department should ensure that all contract time frames and period that are given are theatre to and that the contractor whose payments have been meant and the contract period has lapsed should be taken to task. Number four, the department should ensure proper evaluation of successful contractors is done before handing over project to avoid delays and substandard construction. And also ensure that projects in inspection and supervision is done at all stages of implementation, implementation before payments are meant to the contractors to avoid instances of contractors abandoning the site before finalizing their assigned job. Number five, that all completed projects that are not operational should be revived with immediate effect in the current financial year. And give an example of the Sheikh in the River Township Ward and the Kaseve in Matunglu North Ward. In conclusion, Honorable Speaker, the Assembly on Ward Development Fund appreciate the assistance provided by the Speaker's Office and the Clerk of the County Assembly during committee meetings I would like to express my gratitude to the honorable members of the committee who gave up their time to help with the plan, review, and the entirety of this report. Honorable Speaker, it is my honor to present this report on the World Priority Project and the continued project for the financial year 2020-2021 on behalf of the World Development Fund Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I now wish to propose the question that the report on the implementation status for the ward priority projects under the Department of Public Health and Community Outreach for the year fiscal year 2020-2021. Members, I now wish to invite you to the debate on this motion. Honorable Cosmas Masesi. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and congr congratulations. Uh, my name is uh, Masesi Cosmas Matungulu Eastward, uh, representative to this honorable house. First, I would like to appreciate the report by the chair, uh, World Development Fund Committee, Honorable Justice Katumo, 
And uh, Madam Speaker, is a, is a comprehensive report giving us the status of the ongoing projects within the county. Though, Madam Speaker, my concern is, uh, if you look at the report, it's really, total is uh, big sums of money. But when we are doing uh, the budget, this financial year, Madam Speaker, what was meant for development was only 34 million. In the budget for this fiscal year, 2021-2022. So my concern is how we are going to implement this. And as pointed by the committee, we have one Masi level four, whereby last financial year there was a 50 million budget. And again, this fiscal year, the executive again had requested 100 million. So Madam Speaker, when you look at that number, in terms of uh, equity, you realize that uh, so many wards and areas will be left unattended when we are doing a lot of money in one particular ward. So Madam Speaker, my plea to the executive is to make sure that there is equity when we are doing these, uh, when we are going matters health, because you know health is wealth, and every part of Matung Machakos County, there's need for these services to our people. My concern and uh, the work of this house is to make sure that these stored projects and many of the ones which have been completed, they are not up and running. Madam Speaker, we know there is a shortage of these health workers, and so is the budget. So my plea is for us to see how we can still employ more within the department, though we still know that it takes almost 50% of the county's budget, and still the staffing is not enough. So Madam Speaker, it's up to this house to see what can be done to have more staff employed and occupy these facilities. Thank you. Thank you. Mwishmiwa um, Masesi, Mwishmiwa um, Mita. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for allowing me to also contribute. Uh, I first want to applaud uh, Honorable Justice Katumo, Chairperson World Development Fund Committee, uh, for a job well done, Madam Speaker. I'm actually very proud of him. He has delivered uh, the report in a, in a way we would not have, many of us would not have thought of, about. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, this report uh, is long overdue, Madam Speaker. Uh, it, it, it has given a summary of the uh, projects which has been undertaken by health department since inception of uh, devolved governments, Madam Speaker. Uh, it has also gone to give a status of different uh, projects in uh, various wards, Madam Speaker. And uh, uh, it's, 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 it's not pleasing, Madam Speaker, to talk of a facility which was, which started in the year 2014, and up to date, it's not complete, Madam Speaker. Matters to, related to health, uh, have time timelines, Madam Speaker. There was need to identify areas which needed these facilities, Madam Speaker. I believe enough study was done and need was identified to have such facilities wherever they were started, Madam Speaker. It depends 
uh, to imagine that residents from these areas since 2013 are still traveling long distance to get uh, medical attention, Madam Speaker. Yet every year we are passing budgets and uh, humble requests uh, is uh, your indulgence, Madam Speaker. If we can have a committee of a whole house and have a sitting, we invite the chief officers, both the, for the upper hospitals and lower hospitals, and even the CEC, Madam Speaker, CCM Health, we need to interrogate them, Madam Speaker, and put them on spot to explain to this honorable house why our people why the electorate, Machako's electorate, is still suffering. And yet every year we are getting budgets and we are passing. In fact, this department is getting the lion's share whenever we are passing budgets. And yet they are unable to complete or to implement the budgets we are passing. Madam Speaker, my ward is a victim. I have a facility under phase three, stalled community hospitals, Guinea Health, Guinea Community Hospital, Madam Speaker. You can see it was allocated 14 million. And since 2017, I've been to these offices day in, day out, making follow-ups. You look at the facility, it's only waiting for roofing and then uh, equipping and then our people are, get services there, Madam Speaker. It must go to records that my ward, Kangundo Central Ward, does not have even a dispensary, Madam Speaker. They only rely uh, at level four, Kangundo level four, which serves sub-counties, Madam Speaker. Under there is law that each ward must at least have a level three facility. And uh, have been promised that uh, they'll work on uh, this facility. But even, 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 even when I go to the finance CCM, promises, empty promises, Madam Speaker. I believe it's time now we take action. We should not have white elephant projects in Machakos County when indeed we are passing budgets every year. Our budgets are full of something called pending bills. We don't know which pending bills are being paid and yet facilities like this are stalled. So we need, Madam Speaker, to engage a different gear and see that uh, before the end of the current government, before the end, every facility, every development project which had been initiated is completed. So that the government which will be coming in in the next elections, they don't start dwelling on projects, stalled projects from the previous uh, government, Madam Speaker. We can ensure, Madam Speaker, that where there are some weaknesses, they are corrected and we move forward and we put our energy to such facilities, to such projects, so that going forward, we complete which has been, what has been started and before we embark in new projects. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I support the report. Thank you. Um, um, sorry, Moesh Miwa. Let me, let, let me move to this side, then come back. Moesh um, Miwa Anziva. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and congratulations for uh, sitting that uh, seat. We are proud of you. Uh, I am uh, Jacqueline Ziva. Uh, representing the people of Ikombe Ward and the minority chief in this house. I wish also to congratulate uh, the committee on uh, ward projects uh, uh, led by Honorable Justice Katumo for such a wonderful report and uh, ask that uh, uh, I have a stalled project called uh, Kikesa uh, in Yata which was started a uh, year back in uh, 2014. And I believe I've been talking even to the chief officers on chief officers of public health on the same. And uh, when uh, we put budget, I, I remember last, last financial year, 
there was uh, promises that uh, it will be done. My people have waited and waited, and I believe uh, this is the time that uh, the project will be implemented because I've talked to him. Uh, really, uh, Kikesa is uh, some few uh, kilometers from Kithimani, and I believe uh, when the project will be done, uh, it, will, it will have a decongestion uh, from Kithimani. People going all the way to Kithimani, uh, they'll go to Kikesa and have services. Since uh, health, as uh, the chair, uh, health uh, talked about, health is wealthy, and we need to have our people uh, treated in the most uh, appropriate way. So thank you, madam, and I, I hope the same will be made for, for my people to be to benefit. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mweshmiwa um, Maita. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Congratulations. Madam Speaker, I want to commend the committee on World Development Fund, World Development Fund, headed by Honorable Justice Katumo, for such a wonderful report. I also want them to, I want to commend them on the visiting of the hospitals and dispensaries in the whole of our county to check on what is happening down there. Honorable Speaker, people are suffering because there is no medicine. Even if you go to hospitals nowadays, many people will be told to go and buy the medicine, which is un uh, unacceptable knowing that we have voted a lot of money to that ministry or that in department. Honorable Speaker, the other thing which uh, comes to my concern is the stored projects. When you look at number six, you can see Matungulu uh, health, uh, Community Health Hospital. And in fact, in Matungulu, we don't, in, in Matungulu North Ward, there is no community hospital by the name Matungulu. It was there during the first assembly, that name. It was getting some, receiving some money. And I think one time when we had a committee of the whole house, I wanted the, uh, the, the officer concerned to tell us what this, the name Matungulu, where that, uh, stored, that, that uh, project is. Possibly it might be in Guluni or this uh, community, Guluni community Hospital. So I would wish you clarify to the, uh, to the house that name Matungulu in Matungulu Westward. Because by the records, what we know on the ground, that name Matungulu uh, uh, Community Hospital, the name is not there. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. and. I support the report. Thank you, Mwajmiwa um, Maida. Um, I will move to the other side. I beg you to allow me to move to the other side, then I'll come back to you. Mwajmiwa Mutinda. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I start by congratulating you for that opportunity and start by, again, thanking the chair and uh, the committee of the award projects uh, for this good job done. Madam Speaker, I think uh, they have done a good job and uh, it's well and worth to note that uh, these projects which had, uh, have been done, done down there uh, will go a long way to improving the lives of our people. However, Madam Speaker, like in my ward, I, I happened in the 2019-2020 budget to have a uh, ward award which was maternity award which was being completed and it's serving but near 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 that ward there are staff quarters which have not been completed and there's another male ward which has not been done so uh, following the executive order from his excellency the president he said that all projects should be completed three years down the line that has not uh, taken place so i think it's important that to have value for money is and the value for money in terms of time, those projects should be completed. Madam Speaker, it's, not, it's worth also to note that health services and public health are so much close with issues like water. Now my, 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 my uh, dispensaries do not have 
water tanks, for example. And if we don't have water tanks, then it will be so hard for those dispensaries to deliver. So the issue of treatment and uh, health services are also a matter of qualitative aspect and not more so of quantitative aspect. So it's important that those dispensaries are given uh, supplied with water tanks because the roofs are there even if you don't have a borehole or a water project running nearby, they can take the harvest the rain water so that they have some water to run them. Uh, the other thing is uh, on uh, the current situation where in our wards you find border border borders are so many and uh, accidents are happening every time. Now, the, the time those border borders uh, have accidents, the, the riders and their, their customers, you find somebody is referred to, from like in my place, you are referred to Mwala or even to Machakos to come and get an X-ray. Those are things which I think, Madam Speaker, it is, they should be considered that we have X-rays some place nearby. And especially like in my, my, my area where Ketui Road passes by. So I have a major road which is, has so many vehicles and accidents happening there. You find those people can only be uh, assisted in Machakos, which is quite some distance. So, Madam Speaker, I think it's important that we improve our, our health facilities so that our people get services closer and end time required. With these few remarks, Madam Speaker, I support and uh, uh, I say that it's a good job from the, uh, the committee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Moshmua. Um, uh, Minority Leader Moshmua, Alex Kamito. Uh, thank you very much, our Honorable Madam Speaker. I'm Alex Kamito leader of minority in this house and uh, member of uh, Talawad. And again, Madam Speaker, I'm also a member of this committee. Uh, Madam Speaker, through the leadership of our chairperson, Honorable Justice, and the honorable members of the committee, in the report, Madam Speaker, you have heard that uh, we actually went on the sites in regard to these stalled projects in the health department. And uh, Madam Speaker, uh, to be brief, and uh, if you can see, you have also seen in our recommendation is that uh, people in the health sector at this time, they should be made to move out, to move out, because the, the big problem is that uh, we have got our chief officers, we have got directors, we have got the works officer who are responsible for ensuring that any, any, any project that has been approved uh, through the corroboration of these houses and the executive who are the implementers, the officers in the department should move out so that when we make a report, we compare the report of the committee responsible and the department uh, responsible, Madam Speaker. This will easy, uh, it will easy the work of, uh, of the executive. So, Madam Speaker, what I'm saying is that it is very important that uh, all the projects that we visited, there was lack of supervision from the department. Lack of supervision. That is one thing. Madam Speaker, another aspect that we saw is that uh, there were incompetent, incompetent contractors who were given those projects to do. So we are saying, even in our recommendation, that it is very important because uh, when we are talking about the health of the citizen, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. So we are talking about stored dispensaries, which it is really affecting the health of the community, of the electorate. So, Madam Speaker, my emphasis is that uh, the department should, should ensure that a project that has been given, there should be that follow-up. That is, when the contract was started, uh, the, the, the work ongoing, and the progression report of that uh, project that will outrightly account for ease of uh, uh, payments and uh, it will prevent a stalled uh, project. The other thing is that, uh, Madam Speaker, another important aspect is, uh, is uh, that uh, within the, uh, the Department of Health, the dispensaries, uh, we also found out that uh, there were some projects that were completed, but there are no staff. 
in the dispensaries. So we're also asking the, 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 the chief officers and the executive to ensure that once a very important project like, like the health, I mean, the, like the, the dispensaries, that officers, staff are provided for the purpose, uh, I mean, for, they are provided in that uh, completed project so that uh, members of the, 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 the electorate are given first, uh, services as required. Otherwise, uh, it's a good move by the committee. So after the health department, Madam Speaker, the World Development uh, Committee should also now move again to go also uh, check on the other departments where we have got also a project of that nature. Otherwise, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, any other? Okay. Um, I now uh, may the mover of the motion come and make remarks. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, uh, firstly, uh, you have seen how members have contributed. I want to thank members for your positive uh, contribution towards the report. Actually, in this uh, committee, we are trying to strike a balance of understanding between and dichotomy between and the essence uh, between a stored project from 2014 or 2013, and then we still have. Um, uh, projects that are completed and they are not in use. Now, although a col column was not provided, you find that uh, some of the said projects, they were complete, but uh, the, they, they were not usable. You see, there was something additional that had to be meant to be usable. And therefore, as uh, Honorable Minority Leader said, I think uh, we have some competences in terms of raising the BQ, all the contractors that we are given the work to, to, to do, and therefore you find at the end of the day our money is used, misused, uh, out of doing things that are not beneficial. What I would say, all this very important and uh, projects done under this department should be uh, taken seriously. Uh, secondly, of course, uh, these were the negotiated projects, some of these are the negotiated projects by the honorable members with the county executive to make sure that uh, they are done within this period of time, as we have said in 2020, 2021. And therefore, it's important that uh, most of them um, are completed and then uh, they become operational. On the issue of the Matungulu, uh, uh, Matungulu West Ward, on the name Matungulu, it was an issue that we raised with the, the chief officer, and they still maintain that we have a facility going by that, that uh, the estimated budget being given at 17 million. But in a nutshell, I thank members for your positive contribution and the committee members for being there and making sure that we work and produce. Thank you. Uh, please go ahead. Can the chair, uh, World Development, request the officers concerned to ask me and the team to tour that uh, facility they are calling Matungulu. And we see the name Matungulu in that facility. Thank you, uh, honorable member, your point taken. I do exactly that. Thank you. Thank you, honorable speaker. Uh, members, uh, I now wish to put the question that this house discusses and approves the report on the implementation status for the World Priority Projects under the Department of Public Health and Community Outreach for the year, for the financial year 2020-2021. As many as are of the opinion say yes. Aye. As, as many as are of the contrary opinion say nay. Yes. The highs have it. The House and John's to Wednesday, 4th August, 2021, at 2.30 p.m.
Ah, sí, vamos a ver. Vamos a ver, está bien.